today I am super excited to be introducing you to Mike Vardy, the legend. <laughs> um, I like to hand over to let you introduce yourselves, tell us why you are here, why you are the pinnacle, the expert in productivity that I've brought on today. I'm very, very excited about this. Can you tell? Gosh, I've been studying productivity for the better part of a decade now. Um, one of the things that, I, that I, I just got fascinated with it when I was trying to take on a bunch of different projects back when I was working a full-time job and before I ended up becoming basically the stay-at-home parent because when I started my own biz, productivity business, uh, my daughter would have been five and my son w w would have been newborn. Uh, and so I basically, we're lucky in Canada where I was able to take the parental leave uh, instead of my wife when my son was born. So when that, when it was kind of interesting, when I started to really get into this, we happened to be waiting, expecting our second, our second child. And uh, at that point in time, I, I just said, okay, it's now time to maybe go for this thing. So I was trying to manage, uh, you know, obviously a family life. I was trying to manage my online jobs. I was trying to manage my offline jobs. And I just said, you know, how am I going to keep track of all this stuff? And it had a lot to do with, you know, the building blocks of productivity, not just studying the, the people who have come before me, you know, the David Allens, the Stephen Coveys, Tony Robbins's, you know, time of your life program, all that. But over time, what happened, especially in the last, I'd say three years, uh, is I've developed my own methodology in earnest uh, called time crafting. And so what I do now is I'm here in my home office. It's just before, as we're recording this, it's just before I'm going to, when I'm done here, I'm going to get my kids off to school and things like that uh, is I've, you know, this, this time crafting methodology, I end up coaching people with it. I'm working on my next book right now, which is basically the, the manual for time crafting for lack of a better term. And I, I just get a kick out of, you know, helping, helping people, Parents of all, you know, both genders of, you know, basically help them and, and, and people who don't have kids too, get more of the right things done through simple, flexible and durable, durable methods. Amazing. So what does productivity mean to you? It's such a, it's kind of a broad spectrum and I find a lot of people associate it with more work stuff, but it's not just work. Uh, what does it actually mean to you? So I'm, I'm not a believer in the whole productivity is about efficiency and getting more, getting more done or having more room to get more done. My, my definition of productivity is it's the marriage of intention and attention. So your, your idea is what is your intention? What do you intend to do? And then secondarily, how are you going to pay attention to that? That is really pure productivity to me, especially pure personal productivity, because you could have all the intentions in the world, which would be basically your tasks or your projects. But if you don't have a way to pay attention to them, then they're, they're powerless. You know, we've heard Wayne Dyer's book, The Power of Intention. It's a bit of a fallacy to a certain extent, because without any attention to, to pay to those intentions, you're going to basically end up twisting in the wind conversely the other thing that happens and i think this is where we often get stuck with this whole idea of busy work or or productivity as as you kind of uh explained it in in, in what we see in a lot of the online articles and, and life hackery and all that stuff is uh, attention like uh, paying attention to things that may not be our intentions so things that we don't really you know they they're thrust upon us or they are stealing our attention away through distraction or diversion but the problem with that is attention without intention is aimless so you could be a good example would be opening up your email inbox first thing in the morning and not having a plan going into that email inbox so one of the tactics i teach people is to go into email with missions rather than questions so hey what emails did you know that you needed to take care of that you left kind of sitting there? Let's look at those first and then answer the new questions that have shown up since you, you know, went to bed and the next day or even over the course of the weekend. Because what that does is it gives you agency. Hey, it gives you the power to you, the control to say, Hey, you know, I'm going into email now on my terms. I'm going to take care of the things that were already waiting for me that I know about the certainties and then I'll deal with the uncertainties afterwards. So what happens once you do that consistently, you have a way to pay attention to your intentions, then speed comes, then effectiveness comes, then efficiency comes, but not until those things are put in, are, are taken care of first. And those are the two primary ingredients. I mean, sure, you've got awareness, you've got to put into, into play, you've got focus, you've got clarity. Those are three other components 
but if you don't have intention paired up with that tension, you're not going to be productive. So you say that's, that's the biggest stumbling block when it comes to being productive, when people are looking for the, the thing that's getting in their way, is that really what you're about addressing? Yeah, I think, I think what happens is that we tend to either not get clear about what we really want or get, and, or it gets buried amongst all the other things that are just there, that are the, the things that we feel that we need, that, that we have to do instead of looking at them as the things that we need to do. But the other thing is, is uh, we end up getting distracted by things that are coming at us from external sources. So I'll, I'll give you a, a great example. Um, I know that for, especially with, with my life, um, I know that, for example, and we talked about this just before, is that I want to go see, uh, my intention is to go see the new Avengers movie. I want to see it before all the spoilers show up on social media as a guy who works online and likes superheroes. And you can't, you can't really see all the Lego stuff here, but there's a whole lineup of Lego figures right here. So, and, and Dr. Strange is one of them. All of them are related to time or something, to, something symbolic. I'm a big believer in visual triggers. Uh, my intention is to see that movie so that I don't, have to deal with spoilers but also my son really is into it my daughter wants to go see it too so my intention is to go see avengers endgame that that's something that no matter what else is happening it's something that's an intention of mine so how am i going to pay attention to that well i'm going to schedule it i'm going to put it like that's something that i can't just say well let's just go see it at any random time that happens to be something that plays at a very specific time so i said well if my intention is to not be spoiled by it then i'm going to have to go see it on the first day that means I'm going to need to look at my schedule on Thursday, the 25th of April, and look at my and make sure that I block out from X period of time onward so that I can actually see the movie. Okay, great. Let's go buy tickets. Okay, well, I, I bought tickets to the 5 p.m. show because it's the first showing. Great. All right. So now I've got a way to pay attention to that. I've blocked everything else off. So I'm able to you know, kind of carve out the time to see it and give it my full attention rather than say, oh, well, I hope that I can go see Avengers and I'll just kind of go see it when, you know, oh, the weekend's coming up. Maybe I'll go see it. Like having a lot of, a lot of in uncertainty, a lot of uh, wishy-washiness. Like I don't like words like, you know what? I might get to that or perhaps, or maybe, or probably those, those are, those are not, elements of and we have way more control over our time and our especially our attention than we give ourselves credit for or that we even believe there's and so when when i talk about this stuff um and you and i were talking before we started recording is um there's there there may seem to be a rigidity in some of the elements that i talk about but those th that's very personal i I've, I've created a lot of frameworks around this because that allows me to have more freedom. I've always said frameworks foster freedom, but my framework is going to be different than your framework than, than someone else's because everybody's lives are different and everyone's, you know, work habits are different and energy levels are different. So the, the days are generally different. So what, I, what I suggest that people do when they look at this is they should look at the things that they've written down, whether they're going to use a calendar as their primary place where they put their stuff or whether they're going to use their to-do list or whether they're going to let them work in tandem, which is what I do. And then say, okay, my intention is to be a good parent. Let's say that. And that's a pretty big intention. Okay. How am I going to pay attention to that? Well, I'm going to make sure that on uh, the days that my wife isn't home from three o'clock onward that I'm going to be available to my kids, whether they want me to be or not. I mean, if my son says he wants to go play Roblox or something like that, then then that's fine. That frees me up to do other things if he doesn't want to be around me. But if he does, I've paid attention to that, right? Oh, I want to get in shape. Great. You want to be fit so that you can live to see your grandkids or maybe your great grandkids. Okay. How am I going to pay attention to that? I know I'm going to get a personal trainer. I'm going to schedule time for what I call movement mode between two and three. Oddly enough, right before I'm supposed to pick up my son from school. So therefore my workday now ends at two. And then from two to three, I focus on getting myself in better shape. And then at three o'clock when I pick my son up, I've done my workout. So I'm probably ready to deal with him in some instances because he's a nine-year-old red-handed kid. And sometimes he's just a real, like he can be a handful, right? So I've already purged my day. It's kind of like the nice, nice break of my work day to my home day. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, great. Now I can do that. And, and that's, I have the agency to be able to do an hour. Maybe you only have seven minutes, in which case there's a seven minute workout app there. Maybe you have 30 minutes. It's all about understanding, okay, what's my intention, which is going to be very personal. And then what, what can I do to pay attention to that? Not about, not about, 
uh, productivity comes after. Even time, I don't really, the reason I talk about time management and productivity is those words are easy for people to grab onto and say, hey, oh, I know I need to manage my time. But time moves on whether we want it to or not. What you're trying to manage are things like prioritization, energy, intention, attention, focus, clarity. Those are things you have agency over. The other stuff, man, I mean, management, that's, I prefer to say time leadership. Because when you're a manager, all you're doing is really moving things around. You're not really pushing things forward. You're trying to do a lot of maintenance work. But when you're, you know, doing things like paying attention, you're leading it in the direction you want to go. Oh, I, you know, I want to make sure that I pay attention to my energy because then I can lead myself in the right direction. So really, what I'm talking about is more time leadership than time management. It's the gateway. And, and, and the interesting thing is that, uh, you know, so I, I do one of the elements of time crafting that I talk about is, is time theming. So similarly is that's where the calendar comes into play for me. So I don't put all my tasks in the calendar because I believe the calendar is like the directory of your day, whereas I believe the to-do list offers the details of your day. So for example, I will put in there like that movement mode time that I talked about between 2 and 3 p.m. I don't say go to the gym. I don't say uh, do yoga. I don't say go for a run because some days that can be different, right? Like if I, if the weather's garbage here in Victoria, BC, cause it can be, we, we've talked about this before too, Jessica, like the, the London weather, like British, like the weather in the UK and the weather on the West coast of Canada, very similar. Lorraine, like, you, like right now it looks like it's going to rain today. Luckily today is not supposed to be a run day for me, but if it was, I'd have to maybe make a change. Maybe I would do yoga. But the whole idea is movement tells me, hey, I've got to do some kind of physical activity, whether it's jumping around on the rebounder, whether it's doing some yoga, whether it's doing some lifting, whatever it is, that's what I need to be doing. So I don't, but the to-do list offers those details. So if I'm saying, hey, uh, here's another example today, as we're recording, this is my listening day. So on Wednesdays, I spend my time doing all of my audio work, whether it's podcasting, whether it's getting on the phone and calling someone, my, my mom, let's say, whether it's listening to audio books, whether it's building an audio program for my small membership community, all that stuff. That's listening day. Whether it's spending down, like, hey, it's time to sit down and talk to my kids about some stuff, right? Like, let's really listen to what they have to say. That's my daily theme. I don't say on Wednesday morning when I wake up, hey, what, what type of, you know, what am I going to do today? That's such an open-ended question yeah. that can get derailed super easily. But what I can say on Wednesday is, okay, I wake up, what am I going to do today? Well, hold on, what day is it? Oh, it's Wednesday. What does Wednesday mean? Wednesday means listening. Okay, what listening tasks am I going to handle today? And all of a sudden, what I've done is filtered down this massive to-do list down to just a little bit further. Now it still might be quite big depending on what kind of listening I'm gonna be doing, but then we get into some other elements of like, hey, okay, what, how, what's my energy level like? What, where am I today? What resources do I have at my disposal? Which narrows it down even further. But what that does is eliminates decision and therefore saves you from decision fatigue. So all of a sudden, those boundaries, which we, you and I were touching on earlier before we jumped on, before we started recording, all of a sudden, that's a very, that, that gives me this scope of what my day looks like, kind of like the shape of my day. So I'm crafting my time. And then I can look at that time on Wednesday saying, oh, it's listening day. That's my directory for the day. The directory is, um, hey, you're supposed to look at the listening stuff. And then all of a sudden I'm saying, okay, well, what kind of listening tasks am I going to do? Oh, I already can tell you right now. I have to record two podcast intros and outros today. I have to do another daily podcast today. I have to do an audio program for one of my, I can tell you that without even looking at my to-do list. Now the to-do list will give me more things, but by having that, that filtered focus, I already have a sense of what needs to happen. And then it allows me to move forward. And then if something gets distracted, like if, if my daughter ends up staying home or I have to go pick up my son from school, I'm not saying, oh man, but at this time I had this very specific thing. I go, no, today's listening day. Uh, I guess I can't get this done today. Oh, well, can it wait till next Wednesday, which is my less, next listening day? Or does it, can I do it during my making time between 11, and one, 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., which is when I am at my best because I'm more of a night owl? So it gives me places to put this stuff because I'm not a huge believer in let's schedule very specific things to happen at very specific times, other than obviously like things like doctor's appointments and things like that. Because like you said, life happens. And I don't want that thing to be push to the next tomorrow and the next tomorrow and the next tomorrow. I want to have some clear definition as to where it belongs because once I do that, then I have agency over my time and over my schedule and, and over my attention as well. 
I'm really looking forward to her going to school. Although I've had, I've had, I, I get like really sad moments, but I'm not going to spend most of my day with her when she goes to school. But to have this like longer block of time every day. So at the moment, I have one seven and a half hour block and one five hour block, and everything else. Oh, and a, th and a three hour block. Right. But a three hour block, a five hour block, and a seven and a half hour block in the week. Other than that, it's like a couple of hours in the morning and a couple of hours at night. Um, and then some of those nights I'm out for mm -hmm. a networking event or I go to Toastmasters, which is public speaking. Um, and the mornings I mainly do my workouts as well. So I am I do the blocks of the specific task. But in those three things, that five hour, the three hour thing, there's, th there's normally one task that has to get done. So if right. something does go wrong, I've only got one major thing that has to get done. Um, it, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of um, so there will be a, a like a filming day, which I guess would be like digital video day. I call it. I, I have a, I have a filming day. It's no, called look. Call it it's called, it, I call it looking day because here's the other thing about themes too. That 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 and what you're doing is great. There, I, I want to touch on a couple things here. So I I used to call it video day, but the problem with themes is that if they're too narrow. Then you, then you run out of things to do, and then your brain goes, well, what do I do now? Well, I don't know, and then all of a sudden it starts to go off in different directions. Yeah. But, if you, if they're, so, but if they're too broad, like home day, well, yeah, I work from home. So all of a sudden there's too many things to do, so my brain can't focus. So I used, to, video was too narrow, and obviously home was too broad. So looking allowed me to do video, but it also allowed me to do things like research. It also allowed me to do things like, uh, you know, um, let's say uh, watching a, a specific uh, television show or something like that. So looking became, I call this the Goldilocks factor, right? The too hard, too soft, just right, right? Like, so you got to figure out what the, what's your just right. And further to that, you talked about having these very specific blocks of time. Um, it, sometimes you can't do daily theming, especially if A, your schedule, and this is a bias, you probably could do daily theming because it, remember, we live on 24 hours a day. So if you're working a nine to five, let's say, or you've got your, your, your home with your kids from for all day, and then you have the evening to work on your side business, let's say. Well, if you themed your day, then when you know that kind of shifts into your side hustle day, you at least know, oh, well, it's Monday, and Monday is my admin day, so I should be focusing on admin tasks. But you could also be doing that during the nine to five when you have those moments of of, of respite where you could say, Oh, well, you know, my, 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 my child's down for a nap. What should I do right now? Oh, it's admin day. Great. I could focus on paying bills. I could, whatever you classify as administrative, because there's also life admin, just not, not just work admin. But if you can't do that specifically, there's another type of theming called, I call horizontal theming, which is instead of doing it by day, you do it by hour, but over, a, over th three, four, five, six, seven days. So, for example, my movement mode time is seven days a week from 2 to 3 p.m. My musing mode time, which is like research, reading, is from 3 to 4. And again, that time period, musing can be, hey, I'm reading something with the kids. Hey, I'm doing something like that. 3 to 4 time period is that kind of like open, free kind of, it's as close to free time as I would give myself in that period. There's maintenance time, which is for me from 9 to 9.30 a.m., which is when I'm, I'm more of, a, like I said, I'm more of a night owl. So in the morning, my brain's not really ready to activate yet. But then from 11 to 1, so 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., I'm in making time. So I'm making video, I'm making audio, I'm making writing. So I have a couple of places to put these very detailed to-dos. So that way, hey, Mike, you didn't get all your video done on looking day. Oh, but wait, there, you have 11 to 1 on Wednesday night. Okay, well, then you could probably do some video then. So you, cause you're making video. So you could just take that task and instead of putting it arbitrarily at some other time, you can say, Oh, well, I'll just do it Wednesday night when everyone's in bed and that way no one's going to be. So you, you can do that. And then the other thing I want to mention is once you have, once the kids are in school, don't lose that framework. That's key because what happens, and this happens in two instances that I see all the time. Number one, when parents have kids go to school and they've been home, because I had that, I, Wednesday used to be my daddy duty day where it was just me and my, like, as we, my son was home with me and we just did all dad stuff. So that was not just things like playing with my son, but doing like changing light bulbs. Because 
I could change this light bulb over here on a Wednesday and I could wait till the following Wednesday. It's not like I'm going to be in the dark, right? So often figuring out when things need to happen makes a lot of sense to you too. But the other time that this happens is when people retire. When, they, when they're done their job and they've had this nine to five or whatever, and then all of a sudden they're done, they're like, well, now what do I do with my time? Well, you know, we need to have that framework because we, that helps us motivate us. It helps keep us moving in the right direction. And, and an example of when we lose this also is when we go from, you know, elementary school and high school into college and post-secondary. My daughter is about to go from uh, grade school, like elementary school, middle school to high school. So all of a sudden she's going to still have structure in her schedule, but there's a little bit more flex. There's not a lot of flexibility, but time blocks are longer, et cetera, et cetera. But once she's done grade 12, basically after that, they're taught, Hey, all right, go out to the world. Here you go. No more bells telling you when you need to be in a certain place. None of that. And you have to all of a sudden start to manage your own time and, and manage your own attention. And in a, in a world today where your attention is, there's a war on attention for lack of a better term. Um, yeah, I'm, I, my concern is, so that's another area I'm spending time in. And what I love about time crafting is this idea of theming your time, mode-based work, even journaling, which I talk about too, as part of one of the elements is this idea that I want to bring it to kids in school. And I'm not just talking about high school kids. Like I've talked to educators where they say, we need you in here in like grade four when the brains are still like going through that plasticity where they can understand, Hey, cause they, you know, what they don't learn in schools is they don't learn how to manage their money and they don't learn how to manage time, which are things that we're going to need in perpetuity where, I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I had to do, I, did, I, I, I don't know. When was the last time you had to do trigonometry? I can't remember the last time I had to do trigonometry, but I used it once, like, <laughs> I was discussing this with someone, and there was something, and uh, it was a building furniture, um, I used to have guest houses, and the, I lived in Cornwall, and the buildings were all very small, so it was very, you had to be practical with your space first, so I was building in very practical furniture, and it dawned on me that at that moment, I had to Google how to do trigonometry to work something out, and I was just like... You must have been delighted. You must have been delighted. You're like, yes, finally, the thing, that's what it was for. But, but balancing a checkbook and managing a schedule, those things we have to do every single day and we never, we're not taught it. So, and it's not because the, the, the educators don't want to, they understand the, these executive functioning skills. It's just that the people who make up the curriculum often, and I mean, I've found this in North America, they just don't see it as a priority. And that's, and that's the problem. So what, whenever, no matter, you know, again, no matter whether you're a stay at home mom, stay at home dad, uh, you know, whether you're uh, working a nine to five, what, to crafting your time is something that you could I mean. Some people will theme all seven days of the week. Like I do. Some people will theme one. Some people will say, Hey, I need four time blocks like you. Some people, Hey, you know what? I just, I, I can't do that yet. I'm just going to start with one. So my advice to, to, to you watching out there is start somewhere, start small and build upon that because uh, like you talked about breaking tasks down, that's how you make projects happen by breaking projects down to their smallest particles. Do the same thing with your schedule. Hey, you know what, Mike, I love this idea of having a, a family day. Like I have a family day and my family day is not, yeah. And it's not there. Here's the thing, and this is what I love about the, the confusion that comes. They're like, oh, well, isn't every day family day? No, not every day is family day. It doesn't mean that I'm not around my family every day, but I can tell you what family day does is it gives everyone around, and kids love routine, and they love, like, humans love routine, but how do you, that's what you, have, that's what, the only thing kids have to deal with, mainly because their brains are developing, are things that are constant. So if you like, that's why they have bedtime routines and that's why they, you know, Hey, lunch needs. And if, if I don't know about you, but if my son's routine, even to this day is deviated in any way, shape or form. And I could tell you that last weekend we didn't get home from a family day until midnight because we were driving all over and he's normally in bed by nine. He, when he got home, he, he I'm like, we have to go to bed. He goes, well, what about my, my, my bedtime snack and my bedtime show? His brain, that's what, he, and if he doesn't have that, it's, 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 it's like justice 
it's an injustice against him when that doesn't happen. So the thing is, is that these routines really matter. So I can tell you right now that when we had that family day on Saturday, which is we have either Saturday or Sunday, it just depends on the weather. And that's my wife and I've discussed this is okay. My kids will come to me and go, Hey, can we go do something, Dad? Can we go see the new Avengers movie, let's say? Now, the, obviously, there's an exception to the rule this time because of social media. But in often case, it was like, hey, Dad, can we go to the trampoline park? They don't say that because that all of a sudden, I'm looking at a whole bunch of you know, times that we could possibly go. Instead, they've been conditioned to say, hey, Dad, can we go to the trampoline park this Saturday? Because they're more likely to get a yes than a no. Because Saturday is family day and they know this, right? It's just like when, for me, if I'm going to do a podcast interview, you know when you can book a podcast interview with me? Wednesday. No other day. If you're trying to book with me, it's a Wednesday. Now, again, there's always exceptions to the rule. I just did a podcast interview uh, on Monday this past week. Why? Because it's an author I was pursuing. So that's the exception. That's what I call an abstraction in your schedule. It's not like it's not like you say, well, the daily themes don't work because you know Monday you did a see, Mike. I told no. It's it's listen. This is an abstraction. Life is full of them, and an abstraction is better than a distraction because an abstraction is something you've kind of said, hey, I'm going to put this in place. A distraction is something that's pulling you away, and so. When you have these, when you start to incorporate theming, then these distractions that come up, all you're dealing with is, oh, oh no, um, my, my son or daughter, I have to go to the school. I have to go to like parent conf or t student conferences. Uh, great, that's happening between one and three next Wednesday. Okay, it's three o'clock. We're done the student conferences. Now what? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. What day is it? Oh, it's Thursday. Thursday's my learning day. Great. Let me look at my learning tasks. So it's all about bringing you out of that state of distraction and disruption and keeping you from going down the path of diversion. So there's lots of benefits to this. And it, again, it seems like I'm proud when, when you're listening to me talk about like, Mike, that sounds like a lot. Don't add it all at once. Start small and build from there. Like you would build a house, like you would build a, a family. Don't do it all at once bit by bit by bit brick by brick and that's how that's how you build uh, that's how you craft your time i talk about the um exercise video structure mm -hmm. the 80s exercise video you had the instructor in the middle and she would be doing the like mid level of the class it wouldn't be going too extreme and then you have Bob here doing the, the basic for those that were really unfit and then kate over here doing the psychotic level and a lot of people look at the psychotic level and don't bother. Right. Like, start with Bob. Bob is still doing a lot more than you're doing sat on the sofa, to stick with the fitness analogy. Um, yep. And, and build up to Kate. But you, you're not going to suddenly jump to Kate. And if you do, if you do suddenly jump to Kate, you will find you will never look at that video again. Whereas if you yep. do Bob, you will eventually do, be able to consistently do Kate. That's a great analogy. And that's absolutely, again, you know, Bob has the chair there because Bob needs the chair every once in a while. And, and the second person has the, the, you know, the yoga block because they need the yoga block. But, you know, the person that's extreme doesn't need that. That's where you want to be. Sometimes, and, and sometimes I, I almost like the exercise videos where they're like, here, watch this version, which is beginner one, so that you don't even see it. It would almost, and I know why that's done. It's done in the interest of efficiency, right? Like I'm going to film it once, but have all these three people doing it at the same time. It would just be great. I think for, I think in some instances, especially for a guy like me who doesn't like, who has not traditionally liked to exercise, <laughs> to know that, okay, this is, this is fine. This is where I need to start. So yeah, I totally agree. I think that's a great analogy. Yeah. It, I suppose now you can, when you go onto YouTube, you can put in the beginner or intermediate or advanced, but that's why I say the eighties videos. Like, well, but the problem there is that there's so much, so much information. That's the other thing too, is you can literally get super descriptive or broad. Again, it's that I want to, I want to, what did I look up the other day? I looked at, Oh, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, how to limit rope time on Roblox on iPad. That's very, very narrow. Right. Or I could just like go uh, uh, learn more about Roblox and all of a sudden it expands it. Right. So the great thing about, again, the great thing about technology is it's a tool and we can leverage it in whatever way we need it to, but it's a tool. And I think it was, it was a Thoreau or Emerson that said, you know, we become the tools of our tools, right? Like we end up, and that's what's, you know, I mean, uh, again, a great example is 
uh, this whole movie thing that I want to go see, like I have to literally steer clear of social media because there's going to be somebody out there that's going to spoil that movie for me. I didn't have to worry about that in the eighties. I remember going to see the empire strikes back in the theater. And the only thing you had to worry about was the person coming out of the theater going, Oh my God, I can't believe that. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to give any spoilers for people who haven't seen empire strikes back. But, <laughs> but the point is, is that now you, it's, it, you have to actively avoid this stuff. You have to actively divert your attention. And, and to me, I think the best way to do that is to give yourself that, that, that help, those triggers, those breaks, those, those waypoints. Because if you don't give them to yourself, somebody else is going to give them to you. And when that happens, then all of a sudden you, there's a level of powerlessness that comes to you. You feel like you just start going through the motions. And frankly, I got to say, even our kids, if we're not careful, can do that. We have to, we have to actually like, I mean, they're obviously at, at an age, no matter what age they are, they're developing, right? And the better your boundaries are for you and for them, and I'm not talking about being super strict or anything like that, but things like, Hey, we don't do, I mean, we, you don't get TV time or electronics time until, you know, these chores are done or, you know, and again, things like we talked about finance, like, Hey, uh, we don't talk. I mean, I grew up in a place in a, in a world where your allowance was tied to the chores that you did. Like you do these chores, you get allowance. My wife, no, you were given allowance to learn how to manage money. If I was done, if that had happened to me, maybe I'd be better at managing money. I don't know. So again, you also have to weigh like all of that stuff. There's a lot that you have to think about every single day. We're making constant decisions so the better thing to do is it's like walking into a Costco versus walking into a Tesco, right? Like if you walk into a Costco and you're going to go buy ketchup, you know, you're buying Heinz ketchup and you know, you have three possible sizes, the big tin, the three pack or the restaurant packs. You walk into a Tesco, there's several brands, there's several sizes. All of a sudden you're like, uh, you spend more time thinking about the ketchup you're going to buy and how you're going to buy it and how much, you know, what's the price for milliliter and all that stuff. Whereas at Costco, it's like, you know what? I don't like Heinz ketchup. Oh, look, there's a nice sweater that I didn't know that I needed. <laughs> uh, the, the reason that works so well for Costco is because they eliminate overchoice. They eliminate decision fatigue. Well, you need to do that. I'm like, um, when I go and get my nails done, uh, she keeps buying more colors. And I'm like, can you just have three? three yep. I can pick from. <laughs> Yeah, Apple. Apple's done that. Remember back back before when Steve Jobs was was running it, there was like you could buy three different types of MacBook Pros uh, or laptops. Not even MacBook. Like three lap. I mean, it, again, there's different philosophies that show up. But I think like that's. I mean, having worked at Costco before I started doing this, I was at Costco for almost twelve years. So I've seen like how Costco operates. The reason Costco does so well is they they focus on the things that matter. And the things that don't change, kind of like Amazon, Jeff Bezos says, focus on the things that don't change. And they don't worry about things like, we need fancy shelving, we need amazing flooring, we need great lighting, we need amazing displays. No, they are like pallets, steel, dot matrix printer signs. And then all they do is move things around. So they've got the simple, flexible, and durable framework. And I mean, I was just talking to a friend of mine who uh, still works there. And he said, I mean, the fact that Shanghai is going to get, I think, the largest Costco, I think they're in the middle of opening it right now. I mean, it, it's, it's global. It's a, and, and the reason that Costco still thrives in the era of Amazon is because they've embraced this, this simple, flexible, and durable way of doing business that is, you know, allows people to go in and buy things. Like, I all the time would hear, like, I went into Costco to buy bread, you know, milk and eggs and i came out and spent 250 bucks and i have a, i have a new electric toothbrush yeah that's the whole purpose about target a lot i've never we don't have a target in the uk um, we don't either in canada but ca they went out of business in canada i've got a i have i have a bucket list and i really feel like going to target needs to go on there because i hear so much about you go in for x and come out with x y and z and a b c and j as well <laughs> Um, the, the, yeah, the problem with Target in Canada, at least, was they had that mentality, like you talked about, like there, you know, you go in to buy this, but there's so many things that can delight you. But the problem with the way it was laid out is that it looked like a regular department store, but things were spart. There was not a. It was very Spartan in in the store, like a lot of minimalism. So you didn't see, like, it looked like there was less stuff in the store, whereas a Costco looks like it's packed to the gills. 
I think that's part of it too, is I think some people, again, these are biases that show up. I know in Canada when, when they were going into targets and I know I would go and I'm like, wow, there's hardly anything here. Is the store doing well? Why don't they have hardly anything here? And then the pricing really wasn't something that we expected because you'd go to the States and you'd buy stuff at Target and it would be reason, you know, be like, wow, this is an amazing savings. But once you start bringing things into Canada, it gets a bit more expensive. So the savings weren't there. So all of a sudden, and Canadians don't shop like Americans do and neither do, you know, in the UK, you guys shop differently than we did. Like there's so many different things to keep in mind. And all Costco did was said, hey, you know what, we're going to go, we're going to stay in our lane and do this very thing this way. And that's what they've done. I mean, the, the dollar 25 hot dog and soda that's still available or it's a buck 50 or whatever it is now. I mean, that's, that's a staple, you know, the chicken rotisserie chickens in this, in the back of the store that are, those are staples. The, you know, that's when, when you're looking at your own time and your own life, you want to have those certainties that you know to be true so that you can deal with the uncertainties as they show up. So that way you have something to kind of hold on to because life is full of uncertainty. So if you could say, you know what? I know that first thing in the morning, I'm going to do my exercise like you talked about. That's a certainty. You can hold on to that. Whereas if you just let time kind of move on, whether you want it to or not, it's going to take you where it wants to go. And then all of a sudden you're going to look downstream. You're going to go, how did I get here? Which is why I journal. I journal every single night so that when I go back and do my rapid review every couple of weeks, I can say, oh, this is where I started. This is where I am now. And, and because I journal every day, I don't veer too far off course, right? So it, it's about, I mean, a lot of this is life maintenance and life optimization. And that's really what all of this is. And time plays a critical role. But, you know, when you look at the business models and, and, the, and the models that work out there, like mental models, we hear a lot of businesses talk about this you could see, hey, this, this is working universally. Target works in the United States, but it didn't work in Canada. Probably, and I guarantee they probably won't expand to the UK anytime soon because of what happened in Canada. There's no, uh, land, there's no land left in the UK. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Costco, yeah, Costco's worked every, I have not seen a, a single country where Costco has not worked. So I look at that and go, Amazon, look at Amazon. Amazon's done, you know, they've, now, now again, there's good and bad to, to certain businesses, but but I would, I tend to look at like, hey, what are the what are the success factors that I see that are other people or other businesses or other things are, are how they're working? Other parents, I say, what are they doing right? Wow, how is that mother able to go and work out every day? Well, she gets up first thing in the morning, does that. Well, how was she able to do that? It's not like it's not like she just woke up one morning and said, you know, I'm gonna have 5 a.m. I used to go to bed at like midnight. I'm gonna get up at 5 a.m. No, they had to get there. It's all about the, we, we tend to focus on the de the destination, but yeah. the destination is the end result in a lot of cases. It's not the, the journey. And the journey is happening every single moment of every single day. So I'm, I'm a bit wary of time. And I've yep. got a quick ones I want to ask. Sure. We've looked sure. more at the, the big picture, the longer term, the where we want to, to be to increase the productivity. But for that person that's watching it going, I'm at that very beginning stage and I need a win. I need a yep. quick win to really not prove that the whole thing works, but to really sort of spark my journey. I don't like the term quick fix, but it's the only phrase that's springing to mind right now. Um, mm -hmm. That first little quick fix, they're sat there, they've got this massive to-do list, they don't know where to start. Their first tiny win. Go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So first tiny win would be, you mentioned massive to-do list. I have a feeling that they, well, the first thing they need to do, and this is, this is again, it, it may not sound like a big win, but it is, is look at your to-do list and ask yourself, are these the smallest that these tasks can go? So for example, doing laundry. Okay. So if you're doing laundry for a household of four people, is that the smallest it can go? Is do laundry a task? It's actually a project. I mean, we've done it so many times that we know that it's, oh, I know what I have to do, but you need to break it down to the small, that project down to its smallest particles and you need to do that for everything. Now, again, your version of that is gonna be different than mine. For example, imagine it this way. Imagine that you're giving, teaching your kid how to do laundry. Imagine that you're teaching your child how to do laundry. Remember that and look at it and go, well, where, where is that fine line between what I need and what, you know, the, the young version of me or my child would need. So for example, 
I would say that for some people, they may need to say, do darks, you know, do dark clothes, do towels, do white clothes. Like you could, that could be it. Uh, it could be do my laundry, do uh, child one laundry, do child two laundry. You could, you could break it down to that level, right? So I would say the, the quick win, it, because a lot of tasks are hiding in your to-do list and you don't even see them because you haven't broken them down to small enough increments. Because what happens is you look at a task like do laundry as an example, and you go, oh, number one, I hate doing laundry. Ugh, oh, I don't have time to do laundry. Well, do you have time to do one load of laundry? Do you have time to do grocery shop? Do you have time to go, uh, or meal plan, plan meals for the week? Whew, that might seem really big to you. What if you said plan meals for tomorrow? That sounds smaller, right? So break tasks down to, because you need all the help you can get. And in a, in a world that's constantly moving, you need to break your tasks down. To, and, and the way you do that is by getting them out of your head too. There's some things that are probably hidden in here. So remember, your mind was meant to be a factory, not a warehouse. Certain things that you want to be able to remember, those magical moments, those are the things you want to be able to recall. Not, oh man, did I, do I have enough relish? in the fridge <laughs> better buy that write down like don't write down go grocery shopping you know write grocery list or look in fridge to see what groceries we need or whatever but i think that that that's those little especially in those moments where you're like i remember when my son would go for a nap and i'd be like we've all oh okay great now what can i do and if it was do laundry, that might be okay for me. But like go grocery shopping, I can't go grocery shopping right now. Oh, well, I guess, I'm, no, what about make grocery list, right? Like, so think about those because that way you're moving things forward consistently. So I would say break down your projects because a lot of these things on your to-do list are probably projects. If they have multiple steps, they're projects, they're not tasks. To the smallest particles that you need them to be in. And yes, that's going to make your to-do list longer, make no mistake. But then if you start to look at my work as well, you could say, really, all your to-do lists are, are a bunch, like a big massive to-do list. If you segment it, you're going to end up with a bunch of smaller lists that are more manageable as opposed to this big, long, never-ending to-do list. Because I hate to tell you this, but it's true. Your to-do list, you're never going to get it all done. Your to-do list is going to be never-ending. There's always going to be something that you're going to need or want to do. So better to break it down. Box and in the ground and it's done. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So you might as well break it down to smaller increments so that it seems more doable. Uh, you know, I, I often say that, you know, we often have schedules and to-do lists that are inhumane. Make them more humane. And the way you make them more humane is to make them more doable. And that's by breaking them down to smaller increments. You remind me of that phrase, how do you eat, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. The best bit of advice you've been given or have learned yourself, because I find that sometimes the best lessons are ones we learn ourselves that people didn't tell us about. But yeah, the best bit of advice about productivity that you have learned or been given. Uh, that journaling is probably the most underused and undervalued element of personal productivity out there. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of time to do it. There's an actual like journal called the five minute journal. You could take five minutes a day and journal. You could take, uh, and there's so many access points to journaling at this point. I have an app on my, my phone called day one. Um, I, I'm a great, I mean, I'm sure you take lots of pictures of your kids. There it is right there. There's a journal entry right there. Photo of kid doing something. I mean, wouldn't it be great if you could actually tell, look in your journal and see the day, the actual day and how you felt when your child took, you know, their, their first steps. Yeah. Uh, journaling is one of those things because the calendar tells you kind of an over overview of what might have gone on that day. Uh, the to-do list tells you what you accomplished and didn't, but it doesn't give you emotional components. It doesn't give you feelings. It doesn't give you those, it, it, the, the calendar, the to-do list may tack, tack you know, and, and, and tally the minutes, but a journal will help you tally the moments. So I would say that take some time, taking some time to journal is so valuable because it's this, I mean, really your to-do list, your calendar, all of this is a story. Your whole life is a story and chronicling your story is, is such a huge benefit to you and it could help somebody else down the road as well. There's, there's two things I keep that keep coming up with me a lot at the moment. It feels like every podcast I listen to, every YouTube video I watch, every book I listen to or book I read seems to be coming up with the same thing. Like the universe is trying to tell me something, but they both fall into a category of something I struggle with because they are both physically writing and I'm very dyslexic and 
through school, oh, you're always behind on writing and suddenly you feel like you're a bad writer and therefore writing becomes stressful. Journaling is one of them. I'm writing my goals every day is the other one that keeps coming up. Um, but know thyself, I love pretty stationery. So the goals, I'm going out with the kid in a minute and we're gonna go and find mummy a really pretty notebook. I looked at goal journals, but none of them did what I wanted them to do. So we're gonna go and find mummy a really pretty notebook and from tomorrow morning, I'm gonna write my goals out. Um, but I tried to do the journaling one and I lasted, I think I did, I did nearly three months of every day. And um, I, I was finding it too stressful. I was like, I need to think of another way to do this. So I looked at books and I found the five minute journal. And I was like, this is exactly what I need. And then I got in my own way because in America, you can get a, a pink one mm -hmm. that was mentioned in, and I found it through, it was in a video um, by Amy Landino. She was talking about yep. pink cursion. Got in my own way, you can't get it in the UK. They wanted 24 pounds shipping. So that's on top of the book, 24 pounds shipping to the UK. I'm not buying their book if they were shipping. The okay, so, so let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Um, do you have friends? Do you have friends in the UK or Canada, or in the US or Canada? Yes, and that was like I could get the white one. I could get the white five minute. You don't. Nothing but here's the, the cover. Uh, but but here, this is a good point because often it's those things that that the the, the we do get in our own way. So you have to get creative and say, okay, you know what? I'm not because believe me, in Canada we run. A, imagine imagine the ship. Like it's really weird. We get weird shipping costs too, and we're right next door. And actually what's funny is the five minute journal is a Canadian product. It's made in Toronto. So it's not like it's, I mean, it's, there's no, I mean, um, but what, what I would do is say, okay, you know what? I really want the pink one. Yes, you could get the white one, but you really want the pink one. So I would say, Hey, you know, and you've got a community out there. Hey, who, if, if I was to buy, who is willing to let me have the journal shipped to you and then you ship it to me and I'll pay you the shipping cost, which would be far cheaper than the company doing it. That's, that's a, so it's funny. That's a simple solution, but it's not easy. And that's why I love that there's a distinction. People go, oh, well, this sounds really hard. Yep, it can be because you have to get it out of your own way in a lot of cases, but it's not, it's not, it's simple though. Simple is not necessarily easy, right? That's why the term, you know, like minimalism and all that's revolving around simplicity getting you know distilling things down to be more to have a simpler life isn't easy especially if you've been living a life that's not simple right like that's so you have to you have to so i would literally if you want the pink one i can get you a pink one that's it simple um i could have it shipped to me and i say jessica send me your address and i'll have it shipped to you and that's it and then it's on its way and then here's the other thing about that too which would be helpful. If I was to do that, which I will, I will do that for you. Then now all of a sudden there's this, oh, I, I have to do it because now this other, right? Yeah, every day I'll look at it and be like. My oh, Mike went, Mike went out of his way and he went to the post and he delivered it and he had to, and it, oh man, it was on the weekend. And, and it, again, it's not like the US where I can get stamps.com to like, no, I actually have to go to post and do it. So. Oh, Mike did this. I ha I better use this thing. So there, there's that public accountability too. Plus now it's on video. So now you're like, okay, well now I'm gonna. No excuse. <laughs> but that's it. Like it, often we like we do get. In, I mean, I we do get in our own way. And it, the 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 funny thing is, is that you could have done it. You could have found a way. But it's like, eh, well, I guess I don't. And then all the have you journaled since? Nope. Probably not. Right. I have okay. Okay. And there is, um, I do, in my weekly review, there is my biggest win, uh, what isn't working um, is in there. How am I feeling, which is quite an important one, um, and a gratitude. So there That's is a great start, yeah. Weekly one, and I do a big block of writing once a month, um, and it literally, the top of the page says, it's the end of April, and dot, dot, dot. And, and, I, and I fill in the blank. So I've got, I've got the monthly, I've got the weekly. It was just having that sort of daily connection from day to day. Well, I'm going to write it down right now. So now we're definitely doing this. So you're going to send me your, your address and I'm going to, I'll get you one. 
if they now that said they better well i'll, I'll talk i mean uh, funnily enough i've had a conversation with the team in toronto the intelligent planner team so they they i could probably reach out and figure out if, if it's not available through their site i could probably figure out a way so uh and and the great thing is is when i do this is i actually write down this is something i call my amp list so i'll put send jessica uh, uh a five minute journal pink one i have to put pink but now here's the other thing is i said so here's a good example send but now i have to do this uh so again this is a good example ask jessica for dress because i can't just do that so i'm going to put that as an email and it's going to take me five minutes to do that so now all of a sudden i've added that and yeah my penmanship might suck right now because i'm doing it on my lap but it's better than mine <laughs> so so there's an example I can't send you it until I have the, so that's a good example of breaking things down to their smallest component, right? And because now I should probably put contact, you know, contact, uh, you know, the team at IP about journal, about five minute journal. So all of a sudden, so me sending this to you is not just a task, right? It's an actual project that that to me so now all of a sudden i've written so now i don't have to think about it i can look at this later and by the way the great thing about having like a like a little notebook that you keep with you all the time is that i don't have to remember what i wrote down all i have to do when i get home is remember that i wrote something down because there's nothing and that's why i have those modes there because i can group them by modality or i can group them by task or project or priority level but the bottom line is is when i can look at this now I just know, oh, Mike, you need to look at this notebook later today because you know that there's something written down here. You don't know what it is because you've already forgotten it. Yeah. You don't need to remember it. That's the other thing. And so, you know, if you, whether you use post-it notes, a notebook, it doesn't matter. Or, or you want to use your phone. I don't like using the phone as much for stuff like that because, again, hidden tasks. This is very visual, right? So, so there you go. So now, now I've got that project in place. I've got the three steps that are involved. Uh, and, uh, and then of course they'll be like, so then, then at the end it'll be like, okay, well then let Jessica know here, send her the track number. There's all that stuff. And I probably don't need to put necessarily tasks for that down. Cause as soon as I send it, that could be the trigger. But the bottom line is it's, it's, it's whatever is your just right. You productivity is even when business isn't personal productivity always is. Oh, well, thank you so much. Important stuff. Where can we stalk you online? Where, where would you like people to go to hunt you down? So the best place to go is to productivityist.com. That's the word productivity, then ist.com. And you could, that's, I'm on Instagram there as well. I've got, I mean, basically if you, and if you Google productivityist, you're going to find my site, my social media, all that stuff. And right now I'm working on my next book, which is basically like the time book, this, the tentative title is called Time Crafting, a simple, flexible, and durable way to get more of the right things done, or to get the right things done, rather. And if you go to uh, bit.ly.com slash nextbigproject, uh, you can uh, sign up to get updates for the book there, because the book is coming out uh, later in 2019. So I'm really excited for the, the project. that, that it's, it's, it's the way I'm going to be able to scale and send my message to more people, because I can only scale so far. So the book will be able to carry my message that much further. Everything will be everything will be linked over on everything, and wherever you're hearing this or watching this, there will be links connected so we can find everything. But thank you so much. I, I massively value my time, and I massively value someone else's time. So, to the end, thank you for sharing some of your valuable time with me and with the group. Thanks for having me. Really, really appreciate it. And I hope that I, what I was able to offer is helpful. And again, if you if you're like, hey, this was a lot. Uh, there's a lot on my website that can kind of help you through the process because again, bit by bit, you know, not, not all at once, bit by bit, like your exercise uh, video analogy. I love that. Up with Kate. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. My book. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.